It was a rainstorm, a belly washer today. And, uh, but thank you so much for being here. And it's good to have our Good News children here and their families. And thank you so much. We wasn't for sure what was going to happen with all the rain. And, uh, you know, being people would venture out. And, uh, but we're gl- grateful that you're here this afternoon, this evening, and looking forward to seeing what God has for us once again. And we're so thankful. Just an opportunity for us to say thank you, parents, for allowing your children to be a, uh, be a part of the Good News uh, Club. We're going to show some videos here in just a little bit. You might find yourself on a video and uh, so we're thankful for each and every one of you but let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, this evening father we do love you and we do thank you Lord God for just another opportunity to come to your house we thank you Lord God as we've just taken this evening Lord God and set it aside for Lord our good news clubs and we're thankful Lord God for each child each family Lord that represents Lord our clubs and I pray Lord that you would just bless these family these children Lord as school uh, winds up Lord God and as they go throughout this summer Lord God whatever they might be a part of and vacation and traveling I just pray you put a hedge of protection around them. Lord God, we thank you for all our volunteers and all our workers. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would just bless them and help them. We sure do love you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Good evening. Good evening, boys and girls. I want to take just a moment to tell you a little bit about the Good News Club. First of all, my name is Sandy Alexander. I've been a Good News Club coordinator for, for a few years now. I'm currently the Good News Club coordinator for Jackson Elementary. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. But first of all, we wanted to just kind of give you a little update of where we are in the Good News Club. Um, And we've got some new members here in our church who might not be very familiar with the Good News Club. So just a little bit of history. First of all, in 2004, we were approached by an organization, to uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship, who asked us if we wanted to adopt a school. Well, to us, that was kind of foreign. We weren't really sure what that meant. Um, But through... Uh, further research and some meetings and trainings that we went to there was a group of people who went in and decided that this is what the Lord had for our church and we would adopt at the time it was North Mulberry Elementary Um, every week most most of the parents know in order to be be in the Good News Club each child has to have a permission permission slip and the Good News Club is held after after school hours We worked at North Mulberry for about two years, and then the county decided to use those facilities for something else, and they built what is now Stark Elementary. We worked at Stark Elementary for several years, and then our volunteer base decreased a little bit. So the next year, we were getting ready to go into the school system, and we realized, oh, no, we don't have enough volunteers. We weren't sure what to do, so we did what we knew to The only thing we knew to do is to take it to the Lord and tell him that there is a need. In order to continue the Good News Club at Stark Elementary, we were going to have to have more help. So we prayed to the Lord. We brought the need before our church. We had a special service that night and asked anyone who might be interested in working in the Good News Club to let us know by the end of service. By the end of service, 19 people had come forward. At that point, we had a club of about 50 maybe children. 19 people was a little bit much for the need. So the Lord certainly met the need there. So that opportunity gave us, that gave us the opportunity to adopt Daughtry Elementary, which is next door. We worked at Daughtry Elementary for about four years. Then at the principal at the time was Miss Barlow. She, as most of you know, transferred to Jackson Elementary. And she told us that if she was going to go, as a matter of fact, she called us the very day that she knew that she was going to be transferred. And she said, I'm going to Jackson Elementary and I want y'all to go with us. So, and she let us know at that point that there is such a good a difference in the school, the children, when the Good News Club was there. The Bible tells us the entrance of thy word giveth light, and that's her, our goal is to go into the school system and take God's love. And the, the principal there acknowledged and noticed the difference in the boys and girls, not only during the club time, but during their recess and during their class time as well. So when she asked us if we would consider going with her, you know, instantly, of course, we thought, yes, that's great. But the more we thought about it and prayed about it, we realized, no, we have a position, a relationship there with those boys and girls in that school. So again, we prayed about it and brought it to the Lord and to the church. And again, we had enough volunteers that we were able to create the third group of um, volunteers to go and work at Jackson Elementary. As you know, there's only three elementary schools in Butts County. So the Lord has given us the opportunity to minister to 100% of the families in Jackson that have children in the public school system between the ages of kindergarten and fifth grade. 
So, speaking on behalf of myself and all the other Good News Club volunteers and coordinators, we don't take that opportunity lightly. We know that this is an opportunity given to us of God, and this is a appointment and a, a commitment that we've made, not only to the to the children and to the school, but to the Lord, and that's what's most important. So we want to take just a moment. We're going to individually talk about each school. We're going to start with Miss Candy Davis, who is the coordinator for Stark, and she's been there for, I mean, that's that the oldest club. It's been there for 10 years, and then after her, uh, we're going to talk about the next club that's that's five years old, and that's going to be Miss um, Kathy Sanders, and then Jackson is two years old. So we're going to take those in that order each coordinator and then after that brother chad is going to come and finish her message well as miss sandy said i'm candy davis i'm coordinator at um, stark elementary i um, have been there going on my fifth year or two years being coordinator now um, when we first my husband and i first joined here at lighthouse i kept hearing about the good news club and I love Vacation Bible School, and at the time, my job did not allow me to be able to participate with the Good News Club, um, but always wanted to. Well, eventually, the Lord gave me a different position, and my days became free, and I'm off on Thursday, so I was able to start serving with them at Stark Elementary uh, and teaching, and then stepped into a coordinator's position. So I, as Miss Sandy said, do not take that lightly, that the Lord has allowed me the opportunity to serve and I want to thank our church for your prayers and your support. Um, I want to thank our parents who uh, entrust your children with us after school, knowing that prolongs your day and things that have to happen and you sacrifice that time for them to be there. We don't take that lightly. Um, um, at this time, I would like to mention someone, and she's not here tonight, but we're going to mention her anyway. We have a behind the scene um, worker who is very important to our students. When they check in, they get to put their things away, and immediately they turn and look to see what's for snacks. So our snack coordinator is Stephanie Kitchens. Um, right now, her family life, her situation doesn't allow her to be able to go to clubs with us, but she is a definite need here. She prepares all of our snacks for all three schools, makes sure they're organized. All we have to do is pick up the bucket and go. And to a coordinator with everything else that we have to follow behind, knowing we don't have to worry about those is a tremendous blessing. And we'd like to thank, and I know BJ helps her out quite often because that is a team thing there. So we do appreciate that. Um, I'd like to thank the boys and girls who come faithfully um, every Thursday or Tuesday when you guys get to meet and we meet on Thursdays. Um, we get to enjoy games and songs, uh, missionary stories to wonder time, which Miss Haley um, Alexander does a great job. Um, at this time, I would like for my workers to stand. Some of them may be in the back, but I have the Tinnies, Brother Rob, Miss Beverly. Uh, Brother Rob does a lot of our Bible teaching uh, for our kids. Miss Haley does our Wonder Time. I do the memory verse uh, games and challenge and help in encouraging the kids to hide God's word in their heart. Uh, Miss Hannah and Miss Beverly do our check-ins. Miss Linda Bertram does our missionary stories. Crystal Daniel does a lot of our music uh, along with Miss Haley. And I'm very, um, and I tell these girls all the time, and I even tell the two guys, teenagers that serve, because I served with them uh, last year, how much I appreciate teenagers volunteering and being enthusiastic and investing in these young boys and girls. So, um, at this time, I believe we have our slide presentation from Stark Elementary of uh, 2014 and 15.
All right, I'm Kathy Sanders, and I'm the coordinator for the Daltrey Elementary, which is just right down the road. Um, this is my third year doing Good News Club, and I've spent two years at Stark with Miss Candy, and then this year I was able to go to Daltrey, and I've really enjoyed it. Now, if you're one of my students from Daltrey, could you stand up? Okay. We got Cody and Amy, who are actually members here at our church, and RJ and Landon, who are here. So I appreciate them being here. Now I'd like for my club workers to stand up. We couldn't do it without them, so y'all stand up for just a second. Thank you. We have Brother Preston, who does our missionary story. He's a veteran Good News Club worker and has been at Daltrey for quite a while, too. Miss Priscilla is our missionary uh, storyteller, and she's been there for a good while for us. Our newbies this year was this couple, and they've done a wonderful job helping us out. Miss Shirley does our music, and Brother Rick does our memory verse, so we appreciate them. And Luke over here is our snack guy. He's the first guy the kids look for when he gets there, so appreciate that. Okay, thank y'all. We appreciate y'all. And really, you couldn't do it. There's no way you could do this without a good team behind you. And my team has been so faithful. Rarely a uh, day that we had club that they weren't all there. So I really appreciate them and all that they do. Um, we had a great year, and we had a great group of kids. We have one of the smaller clubs, but we have no problems. I love it. We have a great group of kids and never have had any problems with them. And just are able to go through the whole club and it flows smoothly and we just appreciate that. One of the things that I really emphasized this year, we had memory verses all through the year. But I, we kind of took a, a few weeks where we really didn't have the regular curriculum and we really worked on the verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. A lot of you probably know them. But my kids did an awesome job of learning both of those verses. And the verses are um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And I really encourage the kids to learn these verses because they were foundational verses to your life. And really it's not just for the kids now, but it's for their entire lives. And the reason that we go in for the Good News Club it's to come along beside the parents and assist them in giving their kids a good foundation with the truth of God's Word. Kids, all of you in Good News Club, what is it the thing that we say all the time? God's Word is 100% true. That is the foundation that we can build our lives on. And we're trying to come along with our parents and provide them with Bible truths. We tell stories, but it's not just Bible stories, it's Bible lessons. What lessons can we learn from that? And most importantly, every week, we're giving the gospel. We're telling the kids, Jesus loves you, and Jesus died for you. And we want you to know him as your Savior and base your life on him. So parents, all of you that are here, grandparents, aunts, uncles, thank you for letting us have the opportunity to work with your children. We don't take it lightly, um, and we really appreciate the trust that you place in us and church here at um, Lighthouse Baptist, we appreciate y'all supporting us in this and allowing us to do it. So take a few seconds and see what we've been doing at Daltrey Elementary.
Okay, you've already heard from me, so we're gonna make this really short. Um, just wanna take just a minute, and if you're a Good News Club student in Jackson Elementary, will you stand up for me? Where's my, there we are, good job, guys. Okay, all right, Garrett, you can have a seat. If you're a mom, dad, grandma, aunt, or somebody who made it possible for your child to be here, can you raise your hand? Okay, good job. All right, thank you very much. I know today the weather was crazy and it was it was difficult to get out and not a fun day to get out in the weather and the rain and all that stuff, but the Lord cleared it up for us. But I do, we do as a church appreciate you guys for being here tonight. But again, as the other ladies have already mentioned, we appreciate you allowing your boys and girls and your children to come to the Good News Club every year, every week. If it weren't for you, then there would, there would be no need for a Good News Club. So we do greatly appreciate that. So now to embarrass my team just a little bit. If you are a volunteer in Jackson Elementary Good News Club, would you stand? <laughs> all right, Miss Elaine is in the back and all the rest of my people are in the back. All right, we're gonna start with Miss Elaine. This is Miss Elaine Leroy. She was our, um, this was our first year in the Good News Club. She wanted to get in a couple years ago, but her schedule didn't allow. One of the things that Miss Elaine said at the beginning of the year is that she wanted to stay behind the scenes. Well, about two weeks in, she decided, okay, I think we can do a little more than that. So she, um, by default, she ended up becoming our memory verse teacher, and she did a very, very good job at that. Um, who else? Miss Andrea Turner, she's in the back. Miss Andrea, this was her first year as well. She wanted to be in the Good News Club a couple years, but her schedule did not allow either. And again, Miss Andrea wanted to come in and kind of be behind the scenes, but just it wasn't very far into the year when it wasn't uncommon to see Miss Andrea in the front of the group. So um, she was a true, true, true blessing. And Renee Barnett, is Miss Renee in here? She's in the back as well. So Miss Renee and her husband um, were members of our church and they were called out. They're currently working with another uh, teens in another church. Um, Miss Renee, this was her second year in the Good News Club and she came and she um, was, she just did everything. If there was a need, Renee was just there to, to call on. She was a very big blessing and a big encouragement. And she was in charge of the game. She and Miss, Miss um, Andrea kind of bounce those back and forth week to week. And then we had two other people on our team, which are a little bit special to me, but I'm mom, so I can say that. Hannah and Haley Alexander, who are standing in the back as well. They have actually been in the Good News Club for 10 years. They're 14 years old, and they were in the Good News Club before they were of school age. They went all the way through the Good News Club as a student, and then they've been working in it now for four years. So the true blessing that they have been. Um, <clears throat> And I just wanted to say personally, um, this, this is, it was a, kind of a trying year for, for our church and for our Good News Clubs, but as a church and especially as a team of volunteers, we saw unity and we saw fr friendships and relationships grow that probably would not otherwise have. So I'm truly, truly grateful for that. And if anybody in the church might be interested in working in the Good News Club next year, let us know because there's probably somebody sitting all the way on the other side of the church that maybe you've never spoken to. But God could use that opportunity working in the Good News Club to develop a relationship between you and somebody else. And there's no telling what he can do in the life, in your life or in the life of a child through you. All he asks is a willing spirit. So again, we thank you all for being here, and um, we're gonna take a moment or two and watch the slide for Jackson Elementary, and then Brother Chad's gonna close out the service.
tonight. And uh, we're so grateful and thank you, parents, as it's already been said. Thank you so much for being a part of the Good News Club. And we are so thankful. And uh, we say thank you to the parents and the kids and all of that. I'm all never really kept. And uh, no, I'm not. But I also want to make sure that we say thank you to our church, too. Amen? And uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice and monies, but we're so grateful for the opportunity to be a part of your child's life, and thank you for allowing us that. Tonight, I just want to do something a little bit different. I want it to be for our children. And uh, so, uh, I, I tell you what, I've worked with children. Many of you don't know me. I am the new pastor here. been here about a month and a half, and um, we have just enjoyed it. Me and my family enjoyed it, and getting to know the Good News Clubs. We have never been a part of the Good News Clubs. Um, we've been in children's ministry for about 20 years. This is our first time as pastoring a church, and so we've worked with children and all of that, but we had never been a part of the Good News Club, and I found out real quickly there's a lot to it and a lot of sacrifice that our, uh, our workers do and volunteers, and we thank you for that. And uh, But we want to make tonight very special, and this is what I want to do. Even if you're not in the Good News Club and you're a child, I want you to come up to the front. Come on, come on, come on, all the way up here. Come on up here. And uh, while they're moving and doing that, I do want to do something. Of course, this couldn't happen without our coordinator. So, all, no, no, all the kids, I'm sorry, all the kids come to the front up to the pews here, all right? So everybody stay up here on the pews. Just all the kids that were sitting in the back, those that aren't in the Good News Club, y'all come and sit right here on the pew. I'm sorry, I wasn't make it, didn't make myself clear there. All right? All right, we got one wanting to preach. All right, yeah. That's all right, Mr. Robert there. And uh, I want to thank our coordinators and uh, Miss Candy, Miss Kathy, and Miss Sandy. If y'all wouldn't mind coming up here real quick and they coordinate the clubs and making sure everything gets to the club. And y'all come on back up here real quick and let's give them a hand. And I'm so thankful for you, Miss Candy. Thank you, Miss Kathy. And then Miss Sandy. All right. All right. Thank y'all so much. You can be seated there. All right, boys and girls. Now, this is what we're going to do. And uh, so adults, you just, you act like you're a child again, okay? So uh, here's what we're going to do. You ready, guys? Now, when the ball's in the air, everybody's going to yell, okay? And when I catch it, when Mr. Chad catches it, it gets real quiet. Here we go. You ready? Get set and... <coughs> now, you can do better than that. All right, come on. Here we go. Ready? When the ball's in the air, everybody, everybody gets loud. Ready? <coughs> That's pretty good. Here we go. Just the girls. Just the girls. Come on. Come on, girls. Really loud. Really loud. And by the way, here we go. Ready? Just the girls. Just the girls. <coughs> That's pretty good. Girls, I know how girls can scream. I have two girls at my house and then my wife, so three of them. I know it can get louder than that. Here we go. Just the girls. That's pretty good. Just the guys. Just the guys. Come on, guys. Guys, come on. You can do louder than that. Come on, just the girls. Be paying. Just the guys. All right, and just the adults. Adults, show them how loud you can be. Come on, come on, get out of your shell. You got to break out of your shell. Here we go. Just the adults. Ready, adults? Here we go. Really, really loud. Ready, set, go. When the ball's in the air, adults, that's when you yell. If it's in my hand, it gets real quiet. I don't think they understand, do they, boys and girls? All right, do you think you're smarter than the adults? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Okay, everybody, here we go. If you like ice cream, here we go. That's pretty good. Starting right now, I'm looking for some boys and girls who are sitting up straight, hands in their lap, and not talking. Y'all might want to spread out and get you a seat right there. And uh, because right now, boys and girls, we are looking for three people. We're looking for a boy sitting up super, super straight, hands in their lap, not talking. We're looking for a girl sitting up super, super straight, hands in their lap, not talking. And then we're looking for a boy or a girl, one or the other. You say, Mr. Chad, what are you looking for? If you get picked, and uh, I know in the Good News Club, y'all do the quiet seat. So if you get picked, we're watching. We got some secret agents watching. If you get picked, you're going to be able to come up here at the end of the message, and you're going to play a game called Let's Make a Deal. Anybody ever played Let's Make a Deal? You might have seen it on TV before. Now, this is what happens. If you get picked, if you're sitting up straight, hands in your lap, not talking, and you get picked, you're going to be able to come up here to the buckets and you're going to be able to get one of these two-liter drinks. Who likes Mountain Dew? Say amen. amen. All right. I'm, I'll just keep it. Anybody like Mountain Dew? Amen. All right. Here we go. All right. How about, do we have anybody in here that likes Dr. Pepper? Say amen. amen. All right. How about Sprite? Amen. Now, this is what you're going to do. If you get picked, you're someone sitting up straight, hands in your lap, someone not talking, and you get picked, you automatically win the two-liter drink. It's yours. You can take it home with you, or you can say, Mr. Chad, What's in those buckets? You can trade for what's in the buckets. All right, you can give it back to me, and you can give it back to me, and then you get whatever's in the bucket. You can have it there, all right? So listen to me. It's going to be your choice. You're going to play Let's Make a Deal, and it's going to be your choice. So who would keep the two-liter? Anybody? Who in here would go for the buckets? Yeah, but here's what I forgot to tell you, all right? 
in one of the buckets is the bunker buckets. All right, in one of the buckets is the bunker bucket. If you trade for the bucket, you're gonna go, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have traded. But in two of the buckets, you're gonna go, wow, that's awesome, I'm glad I traded. But the only way that you can play is you gotta be someone that's sitting up straight, hands in your lap, and you gotta be somebody that's not talking. I want to share a verse with us and then we're going to get to the ice cream. We got about 15 minutes there and uh, make sure we'll try to everybody stay seated there. We might need an adult to help out right here. All right. And uh, to grab him, he sees all kinds of goodies up here. All right. There you go. All right. And uh, so this is what we're going to need. I want to share a verse with us in just a moment, but I know in the Good News Club, y'all been learning things about the Bible. And I got something up here on the screen up here tonight. And uh, let's make sure I got this on here. And uh, what I need to know about my Bible, I want to share some things. We got about 15 minutes, all right? I want to share something with you and share a story I think that you might be interested in here tonight. But I want to remind us in here tonight, listen to me, boys and girls, something about our Bible. And adults, this is good for us to remember too. Who made the Bible? Anybody can raise their hand up and tell me who made the Bible? Who made the Bible? This young lady right here, all right? Is it Ava? Is that right? All right, Ava, who made the Bible? Oh, did you hear her? She said God made the Bible. Is she correct? That's exactly right, boys and girls. May we never forget who it is who made the Bible. Yes, it was God. Now, here's the next question. Listen here. Is everything in the Bible true? Is everything in the Bible true? What do you think? Somebody tell me, is everything in the Bible true? She says it is. Let's see. Yes, everything in the Bible is true. Now, the Bible said about a man named Jonah in the well. He got swallowed by a well. Is that true? Sure it is. That's exactly right. Everything in the Bible is true. So guess what? If God made our Bible, boys and girls, and everything in the Bible is true, then guess what that means? Hey, that that makes our Bible what? Very special. Please never forget that. Hey, at Lighthouse Baptist Church, in the Good News Clubs, we want every boy and every girl to know that your Bible is very, very special. Just a couple weeks ago, we celebrated something. Anybody remember? I got it up here. We celebrated what? Easter. That's exactly right. Probably some of you got some Easter candy and maybe you want an Easter egg hunt and all of those things. But you know what? Why did we celebrate Easter? Anybody remember? I want to share with you a verse. When I think about this verse, I think about Easter and we've just been a couple, couple of weeks away from Easter and I want to share a story with you. But I want us to look here. We got the verse up here on the screen. Matthew 28, 6. And look what Matthew 28, 6 here, uh, 6 here says. God's very special book. It says this. It says, He is not here. And what's the next words? For He is what? For he is risen, as he said, come see the place where who? The Lord lay. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Let's read that verse again right here. It says, He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Matthew 28, 6. This is what I want to do, boys and girls. Starting right now, I'm looking for somebody that's sitting up straight, hands in her lap not talking. We're going to share something, be a help to us. And I know we might be talking to the kids, but listen to me really tonight, even adults, we can get something out of the message this evening. Right. I would ask that you would just pray as we pray, every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. We're going to pray and we're going to ask the Lord to help us this evening. Father, we pray you'd help us. And Father, we thank you for each boy, for each girl that made it here tonight. And Father, I realize it's a little different message and far, as far as we're preaching to the kids, but God, I pray, Lord, that the simplicity of the message, Lord God, would just make us all from the oldest to the youngest in here just so grateful and thankful for what you've done for us. And Father, we thank you for each worker, for each child. I pray that you would bless us in Christ's name. Amen. The story is told of a little boy named Jeremy. Jeremy was a special little boy, and Jeremy, he had a special, he was special little boy, but Jeremy was bound to a wheelchair. Jeremy couldn't walk like most kids could. Jeremy couldn't get up and go outside and play like most kids could. But Jeremy went to school and he went to the normal school where all the boys and girls went. But Jeremy in class, when he would be in class, he couldn't say much. And matter of fact, if you was in school with Jeremy, you would hear him just every now and then. He would just make certain noises and, and grunt and he couldn't really talk too much. But Jeremy was a very special young man. But because Jeremy had some disabilities about him, it made the teacher at times, Miss Doris Miller, very, she didn't know how to handle him. Sometimes she would, he would act up in a way that she just didn't know how to handle him. And then the biggest thing was she just didn't ever think that she was getting through to, to uh, Jeremy. She just thought, I just can't seem to get through to Jeremy. It just doesn't seem, I don't know if Jeremy really understands. And she got to thinking, you know what? I think Jeremy needs to go to a different school. So Mrs. Doris Miller, she called the parents together and they had a big meeting and there in front of Jeremy and they began talking. 
And they've just been sharing her heart about Jeremy and how he is in class and just not feeling like Jeremy understands. And she said, you know what, I think Jeremy might need to go to a different school, maybe a school that can spend more time with him and help him. And Jeremy's mom looked at the teacher, Miss Doris Miller, and said, oh, Miss Miller, please no. Please no. And even tears started coming down her eyes. I said, no, Jeremy loves his class. And I don't think that we need to send Jeremy to another school at all. I think Jeremy needs to stay right here. Please don't make us go to another school. With that, the meeting was over and they went home and, and uh, uh, Jeremy's mom and dad talked and they were just a little upset and just not for sure what they were going to do with Jeremy. With that, the next morning came and they got to school that day and school started and Mrs. Doris was teaching everybody and all of a sudden she noticed Jeremy started coming down the, down the aisle. He was taking his wheelchair and he was rolling down the aisle and he rolled all the way to the very front where Miss Miller was. As Miss Miller was teaching there, all of a sudden she stopped and she looked down to Jeremy and Jeremy, with just uh, the way that only Jeremy talked, he said, Teacher? And then he said these words, I love you. I love you. With that, Mrs. Miller then, she kind of blushed and really didn't know what to say, but I love you too. And then all of a sudden, Jeremy went back to his seat. It was getting springtime, and, and it was getting springtime and close to Easter, and the teacher wanted to teach them about Easter. And uh, so this is what they did. The teacher said, hey, I want to teach them about Easter. And so guess what she did? She gave the kids an empty egg. She gave the kids an empty egg that day and she gave it all to them and she said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take the empty egg home and I want you to put something in there that represents new life. It's getting close to Easter and we want to celebrate Easter and getting close to spring and, and this is what I want you to do. I want every kid in the class to take an egg home with you and put something in it that represents new life. All the kids were excited and all of a sudden they went and get, they got an egg and every kid got one of the plastic eggs and they went home. That night, there was about 19 kids in their class, and that night, though, she looked before the kids left, and she looked at Jeremy, and she could tell Jeremy just didn't seem like he understood what was going on. Didn't seem like he understood when they gave the plastic egg, and, and so as they gave Jeremy the egg, and she thought, I need to call her parents. I need to call Jeremy's parents and explain to him what he's supposed to do. That night, she got real busy, and she wasn't able to call the parents and uh, to tell them what happened. And the kids came in the next day. They were so excited. They brought all their eggs in, their plastic eggs, and they brought them, and they put them in the basket where Mrs. Miller was. And during the lesson time, she was going to open them up and see what were some of the things. She got to the first egg, and the story says that when she opened it up, it was a flower. She said, yes, exactly, a flower. It represents new life. And all of a sudden, a little girl sitting over here raised her hand and said, hey, Miss Miller, Miss Miller, that was my egg. I brought that in. I brought the flower in. With that, Miss Miller said, that's great. That's exactly something that represents new life. Then she picked up another egg and she opened it up. And when she did, it was a plastic butterfly. She said, yes, exactly, a butterfly can represent new life. And all of a sudden, a little boy sitting over here raised her hand and said, Mrs. Miller, that was mine. I brought that in. I brought that in. She said, that's exactly right. That represents new life. Then she picked another egg up and she picked it and she could tell something was in it. And when she opened it up, it was a rock with moss on it. And she opened it up. She said, yes, moss. That represents new life as well. That's exactly right. And another boy over to the right, he raised his hand and said, Mrs. Miller, I brought that one in. Well, good job. Good job. The teacher said. And then she got to the fourth egg. When she got to it, she felt it. It didn't really feel like much was in it. And she went and she opened it. And when she did, it was what? It was empty. All of a sudden, when she saw the empty egg, she realized, oh no, this was Jeremy's. He didn't understand. He didn't understand the lesson and what we were trying to do. And all of a sudden, she closed the egg real quick and she put it down and she went to the next, in, next egg. And all of a sudden, Jeremy... If you were there that day, you would see his hand trying to go up. And all of a sudden, Jeremy said, M -m Miss Doris? And with that, she stopped and said, Yes, Jeremy. He said, Aren't you going to talk about my egg? And she looked at Jeremy and said, Well, Jeremy, I don't think that you understood it was empty. He said, Yes, exactly. You see, and he said, Just like Jesus' tomb, it was empty. You see, Jeremy did understand. Jeremy understood the lesson, and though it was empty, it was representing when Jesus came to this earth and He died, and then they buried Him, and He arose, and He's not in the tomb no more, and it represented new life. 
With that, tears began coming down Mrs. Miller's face as she realized that's exactly right. Hey, but listen, Jeremy did understand. Jeremy has been understanding this whole time about what she had been teaching about Jesus. Now listen, I'm almost done. I hope you're sitting up straight, hands in your lap, and no one talking. You see, the Bible says in Matthew 28, 6, it says, He is not here, for He is risen. He is risen. Come see the place where the Lord lay. I want to show you a few more slides here about Jesus. Who is Jesus? We've been learning that in the Good News Club. Parents, we've been learning about who Jesus was. We know the story, how Jesus was born in a manger. You remember? That's why we celebrate Christmas. Yeah, we like to give gifts and we like to open up gifts. But the whole reason why we have Christmas is why? To celebrate what? Jesus' birth. Hey, why did Jesus come? He was born in a manger. We heard the story before how He was born in a manger and then Jesus came and He talked. He talked to the disciples. He loved people. He cared for people. And guess who else He cared for? Who? He cared for children. Boys and girls, can I say this real quickly? I know you've been taught this before in Good News Club, but can I say that God that Jesus loves each and every one of us. Amen. And parents, by the way, in here tonight, can I remind us in here, hey, Jesus loves and cares for each and every one of us in here as well. But you know what? What was the reason that Jesus came to the earth? Why was He born? Does anybody know? Yes, sir? To cleanse our heart from sin. All right, exactly. You know what? Jesus came to the earth. That's exactly right. To die on the cross. You know what? At the age of 33, hey, Jesus went to the cross and listen, He died for us. Hey, that Good News Club, every single week, I know y'all hear about that, how Jesus came. And what did they do? They took Jesus and they put Him into the tomb. But what happened three days later? Anybody remember? Something special happened to Jesus. What happened to Him? Yes, ma'am? He arose again. Jesus is alive today. You know what, boys and girls? That's very important that we always remember, hey, what Jesus came here for, and that was to die for each and every one of us. Why? So that we could go where? To heaven when we die. That's exactly right. Jeremy, just that little boy there, Jeremy in the wheelchair, he understood what Jesus was all about, that he had came to this earth, that he had died, and that he rose again. Hey, parents in here tonight, listen, I know a little bit different of a message, but isn't it good sometimes just to get in the simplicity, the simpleness of it all? Because sometimes we try to complicate it. Sometimes we try to complicate salvation. But the truth of the matter is this, Jesus came to this earth, he loved us, he cared for us, and he died for us. Amen. And he arose, and he's in heaven today, and listen, Boys and girls, as you're sitting up straight, hands in your lap, not talking. He wants every one of us to go to heaven when we die. I want to close with these things right here. How do we get to heaven? You know what, moms and dads, we might be talking to children in here today. And can I just say this? In every Good News Club, hey, we've been able to tell your children about Jesus and how they can know for sure that heaven's their home. Can I ask us this question in here tonight? Do we know for sure that heaven's our home? Do we know for sure if we die today? that we would go to heaven when we die? Because the truth of the matter is this, that's the most important thing in life. You know what? Work is important. we got to go to work and support our family. You know what? Driving a nice car, or driving a car, learning those things, that's great. Doing all those things. You're taking our kids to ball games and ball practices and all of that. And all those things are important. But the most important thing in life is making sure that we've asked Jesus to come to our heart and forgive us of our sins. I want to sh share this with you. And boys and girls, you've seen this before as well. How do we know? How do we get to heaven? And how can we make heaven our home? Boys and girls, I know you've heard this, but moms and dads, may we examine our life just in a little simple message tonight. May we just examine our lives and think about this. Hey, how do we get to heaven? I think about this, what we've taught boys and girls for years and years and years, is the first thing is I must admit what? Let's say that together. Ready? I am a what? Sinner. I am a sinner. Somebody raise their hand, boys and girls. I know you know this in Good News Club. Hey, what is a sinner? What's a sinner? If we've got to make sure to be able to go to heaven, we've got to admit that we're a sinner. What's a sinner? All right, how about this guy right over here? Yes, sir. Mr. Jake. Someone who does bad things. Oh, did you hear Jake? Now listen, here we go. Ready? Go. Someone who does bad things. That's exactly right. God says, hey, to be able to get to heaven, we must realize that we are a sinner. Someone who does bad things. Listen to what the Bible says here in Romans 3.23. What's it say? It says, for all have what? Sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Somebody raise their hand, boys and girls. What is something maybe a sin? that boys and girls might do. What well, something I'm not saying that you do particularly, but maybe something that boys and girls might do. Yes, sir? Lie. Lie. Tell a lie. Are we supposed to lie? No. That's called a what? Sin. Sin. We're not supposed to lie. That's exactly right. Yes, sir? Steal. 
steal. Steal. Take something that's not ours. That's exactly right. That's a sin. Yes, ma'am? Hit somebody. Hit somebody. That's exactly... Anybody in here ever hit your brother and sister? Don't, don't, don't tell me. All right? Listen to me. You know what? That is a sin. And the truth of the matter, we talk many times to boys and girls, but listen, and I know, and I keep saying this, because sometimes we can look in our own lives and we think, oh, this is for our children. But I want to tell you, this is for us. That's right. This is as simple as it gets, parents. Listen, the truth of the matter is people are dying every single day. And people are dying. We'll go and turn on the news. I don't even like watching the news no more. We will turn on the news tonight and someone's passed away. Someone's died. And parents, even in the simplicity of a children's message, may we examine our life. Because there was a day that I was a young person. As a teenager, I sat there as a preacher preached. And he talked about how to be saved. And I realized, you know what? I've messed up. The Bible says we've all... What's the word all mean? It means all. Good job, children. Yeah, good job. All means all. That means everybody has what? We've all done wrong. Every sin. Has the pastor done wrong? He has, hasn't he? Hey, have you ever did wrong? Yeah. Have our parents ever did wrong? We've all done wrong. The Bible says we've done it. Now, to get to heaven, we must admit we're a sinner. And number two, though, look at this one. I like this. Ready? We must believe something. Everybody read this with me. Believe what? Jesus died for me. Hey, this is some good news right here. Jesus died for me. Look what the Bible says in Romans 5, 8. But God, what? Commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. You see that? There's a big word up there, but God commendeth. That just means God proved He loves us so much, hey, that He gave Jesus His Son. God proved His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, because we've done wrong, Christ died for us. Hey, listen, to be able to get to heaven, moms, dad, boys and girls, we must admit we've done wrong. And sometimes as adults, you know, with your kids sometimes, did you do that? Our kids are going to go, no, I didn't do that. They're going to blame it on somebody else. The truth of the matter, sometimes even as adults, we won't admit it. Hey, we've all done wrong. We've all sinned. And we must believe Jesus died on the cross for us. He was the only one that was perfect. And then what's the last thing? Say here, we're going to share this. We have a presentation to give out a gift card real quick. And then we're going to go to some ice cream. But look at this right here. Hey, we must to get to heaven. What must we do? Call upon Jesus to be my Savior. Call upon Jesus to be my Savior. So to be able to get to heaven, boys and girls, we must admit that we're a sinner. Moms and dads, have we ever did this? Have we ever said, God, I know I've messed up. Please forgive me. Have we ever said, God, I know that you died on the cross for me. Have we ever called upon Jesus? All that means is praying to Him. God, I know I've messed up. You know what? They tell the story about the Titanic. Anybody ever heard the story? You remember? Hey, as I read the story and saw all of that and the Titanic was sinking, what happened? People were drowning. And what were they doing? Help me! They were calling out. Hey, hey, come over here, help me! They were calling out for somebody to come and save them. That's exactly what Jesus wants us to do with Him. Just to call out to Him. God, I know I've done wrong. Come in my life and save me. Look, look what the Bible says in Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. saved. Can anybody be saved? Yeah. Can anybody go to heaven? Every single person, it doesn't matter what color we are. It doesn't matter where we live. It doesn't matter in what country we live. Boys and girls, anybody can go to heaven. All we got to do is say, God, forgive me of doing wrong. I believe you died on the cross for me. Come my life and save me. And listen, if we do that, we can go to heaven when we die. Can I just ask us this question as we close? Parents, boys and girls, your kids have heard this all year long. But parents, have you ever asked Christ to come to your heart? and forgive you of your sins. If you never have, you can do that. You can do that just in the quietness of your seat. Hey, admit that you've done wrong. Call on Jesus. Believe He died on the cross for you and you can go to heaven when you die. Boys and girls, that's the very best news that anybody can ever tell us is about Jesus Christ. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed this evening. Father, we pray that you would help us tonight. Lord God, I pray that you would help us as we finish out the evening. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, we just thank you for each child, each parent. Lord, for this church, for each worker and volunteer. We pray, Lord, that you would bless. And Father, truly, if there's a parent, if there's somebody in this room, Lord God, an adult, Lord, a child that's never trusted you, Lord, I pray that they would come to know you. I pray, Lord God, that they would, they would come and, and, Lord God, they would seek you and admit their sins and believe you died on the cross for them. And Lord God, I just pray that that might would happen. And Father, we just pray that you would bless now our clubs. We pray, dear God, that you would work. 
And Father, we just pray, Lord God, that you would do that. And with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, I just want to ask this question. Hey, how many would say, you know what? My head's bowed, eyes closed. I'm not going to call you out and embarrass you, but you know what? I know for sure if I died today that I'd go to heaven. How many could say that tonight? That's me, a simple little kid's message. Hey, to remind us again. Maybe we put our hands down. I won't embarrass you. Is there anybody says, you know what, Mr. Chad, since you've taught, I'm just not for sure. Don't call me out. Don't embarrass me. But just pray for me. I just want to pray for you tonight. Anybody just raise their hand and say, that's me. Nobody looking, but that's me. I'm just not for sure. I see that hand. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Anybody else? Any, anybody else say, you know what? That's, I'm just not for sure. I see those hands. Thank you. Listen, I would love to talk to you tonight. I would love to. We're going to go out and eat ice cream in just a minute. Me and my wife will be standing out there. And if you raise your hand, you're not for sure. If you're a child, you're not for sure. Get with your coordinator. If you're an adult, just come and see me. We would love to show you in God's Word because that's the most important thing in making sure. If you're a lady, we'd love to show you. My wife would love to show you in God's Word how you can know for sure. If you're a man, we'll show you. Father, we do love you. We thank you, Lord God. We pray you'd bless now. We love you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, now this is what we're going to do. We've been looking for somebody sitting up real straight, hands in her lap, not talking. We're almost done. We're fixing to go out and get some ice cream, but we got to give away some things. So who were, who were looking, Miss Amy? We had some people watching. All right, who was looking for the, who was looking? Well, you had somebody, Brooke? All right, bring them up, call them out. All right, this was for a girl. Who? Right here in the jean jacket. All right, right here. All right, super, right here. All right, then who was looking for a boy? All right, Mr. Kenny was looking for a boy. Who'd you have, Mr. Kenny? This young man right here. Uh, who? Right here? All right. You might have to point to him there. Or you got him? All right, come on up here. And then we're looking for a boy or a girl. Boy or girl. Oh, that, that would be you. Right here with the plat. Yep, you. You're pointing to yourself. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, come on up. Who was it? All right, a boy or a girl. Super. Let's give them a hand. Everybody did so well, so well. All right, y'all come right up here. Come right up here real quickly. All right, we're going to play Let's Make a Deal. Now, this is what you're going to do. We'll let the girls go first. So do you want Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, or Sprite? Which one? She wants the Sprite. All right, now you hold on to it. Just stay right there, okay? Don't go nowhere. All right, now, RJ, do you want the Mountain Dew or the Dr. Pepper? Um, Dr. Pepper. He wants the Dr. Pepper. All right, yeah, there you go. There's Dr. Pepper. And this is, what's your name? Caleb. Caleb, Caleb you want the Mountain Dew or the Mountain Dew? He wants the Mountain Dew. Good choice. Good choice. Okay, now this is what you get to do. Now come stand right over here. Now you can keep that or you can trade it. You can give it back to me and say, you know what? I want what's in the bucket, Mr. Chad. And I want to tell you, in two of those buckets, you're going to go, yes, I'm glad I traded. And one of the buckets is the bunker bucket. But it's your choice. What should they do? Trade or keep it? Trade. Oh, I hear everybody saying trade. All right, it's your choice. What do you want to do? You're going to keep it? You sure? She wants to keep it? All right, Amelia's going to keep it. Give her a hand. All right, go ahead. You can keep that. You can have a seat right there. All right. All right, what about you, Mr. Ray? All right, Mr. RJ said he's going to trade. All right, all right, well, give that back to me. Yes, I'm going to have Dr. Pepper tonight. All right, let's see here. And which one do you want to do? You want to trade it or keep it? Keep. He's going to keep it? You sure? Positive. All right. All right, give him a hand. He's going to keep the Mountain Dew. All right, Mr. RJ. And uh, so now's your choice. We have bucket number one. We have bucket number two. We have bucket number three. It's your choice. Which one do you want? All right? It's your choice. One, two, or three? One. He says one. All right. Anybody here think they should pick one? Yeah, who would pick one? Yeah, yeah, we've got a few people. All right, good job. So you want one. You sure? All right, now Mr. RJ wants bucket number one. Let's see here. So this is the bucket you want. You sure? You don't want number two? You don't want number three? Uh, he doesn't want those, so he wants number one. Let's see what he's wanting here. A plastic bag. Well, hold on that for just a minute there, Mr. RJ. Let's see. Let's see. Let me make sure there's nothing else in here. Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, there's a Kool-Aid drink. Hold on. Bring your bag over here. Bring your bag over here. All right. Let's see. What else we got in here? Oh, it's a Kool-Aid drink here. All right, good job. All right, slide over over here, Mr. RJ. All right, oh, another Kool-Aid, yeah. Take, come over here this way. Come over here. Ready? Let's see. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. Here we go. And guess what? Another Kool-Aid. Yeah, there we go. And uh, let's see here. We got a whole bunch of some candy here and some more candy. Oh, there's some, uh, let's see, fudge rounds right here. And there's another fudge round. There's a whole bunch of fudge round. There's a whole bunch of candy. And then also, you also, because you were the only one, you get the Chips Ahoy, plus you get the Oreo Minis, and you get the Teddy Grahams. All right? Give Mr. RJ a hand. Whoa. That's a lot of candy. All right. Good job. Don't eat that all in one sitting. Okay? That would be very, very bad. Okay? 
Good job. Give RJ a hand and give everybody a hand tonight. All right, great. Thank you all, parents. We're going to have one more presentation to give out. I think Miss Candy's coming in for the, uh, and then we got to do the offering, and then we're going to be dismissing out for the candy. So uh, let's do the offering real quick while they get together, and uh, we'll do the offering. So men, let's come on ahead, and uh, this will be for our church offering, so uh, uh, for our Sunday night offering. And I know we have a lot of guests in here, but this is for our church family giving, and uh, we're so grateful, and thank you, church, for giving. They're going to come forward. We're going to pray, and uh, then we'll take up the offering tonight. And while they're taking up the offering, since it's getting late, we'll go ahead and do the presentations as well. So, men, y'all come on and come forward here this evening. And, uh, Brother Paul, if you wouldn't mind to pray and uh, open up the, uh, our pray for the offerings.